Well, welcome back in. I don't have a, uh, a beer to crack because I'm drinking some Pop Tops tonight. <laughs> well, that, that would be a bottle. I'm going bottle, not Pop Tops. Yeah. Pop Top would have been popped. <laughs> going bottle. I can only drink so many of these, so can't do a new one every <laughs> segment. <laughs> I'll be over here slurring words, which I do sometimes, so try to keep that to a minimum. <laughs> um, I just combined minimum and minimal together. I just did it right there. We so. don't need you turning the knobs the wrong way over there. Right. Well, once you get them set, it just it's a lot of tweaking before you go. Mm-hmm. Which we got some cameras rolling. I don't know if you guys are going to see that yet or not, but we're doing a bunch of trial runs, trying to figure out the lighting and all the angles. It's very meticulous. Sure. <laughs> well, let's get back. Much into, like the Ravens' uh, rushing attack. Yeah, let's get back into some. Well, that's more like blunt force trauma. But anyway, RB uh, <laughs> RB free agency <laughs> chit chat here. You can find us at the FF Dynasty. On the Twitters. Um, our Twitter handle <laughs> is at RJ Bell. <laughs> is that your was that your Stephen A. Smith yeah. RJ Bell's yeah. Twitter handle? That's read? not even his Twitter handle. That was pretty good. <laughs> I like look for RJ Bell and this guy's got like ten followers. I was like, that ain't him. <laughs> Cause I was you know, I was trying to fill up my bracket. We got a we got a cool bracket going with our Patreon crew and uh yeah, I don't know nothing about college basketball because nope. I more care about these rookies about to come in the NFL than I do about college b ball. But that was a good Stephen A. Smith. Uh, that wasn't at, le- bad. at least on his at least on his RJ in Vegas read there. His right. Twitter handle <laughs> <laughs> at the FF Dynasty. <laughs> not bad, not bad. All right, well you can find Screaming A or <laughs> J- Scre- Screaming J. Is that a nickname? At is? Screaming A. Smith. Yeah, yeah. Huh, I uh, never heard that. You it's can clever. find Screaming J at at J Wayne's World. Big Co's at Dynasty Big Co. I'm at IMC Myers. Let's get into some Mark Ingram. We, we went Le'Veon Bell. We're going to go down the kind of the hierarchy of the free agency signings here. I would say that Le'Veon Bell is probably the next, or yeah, Mark Ingram's probably the next on the uh, totem pole here. Um, ADP currently is 92.8 down from 65 in December, so tumbled a bit. Obviously, like we said Simmons in the Le'Veon, <laughs> right? Obviously, as we said in the Le'Veon, it hasn't quite factored into the signing and where he's gone yet. I do think this is a, a pretty good um, landing spot for really any running back and a running back of of Ingram's caliber. Uh, why the hell not? This is a team that ran over sixty percent of the time once Lamar took over last year. So this is a a good. It's a strong landing. Spot. Yeah, this is a good, and I'm not saying that that Mark Ingram's a dual threat per se, but oh, I mean he's he had just fine. He had seventy some catches or, or targets in 2017, I believe, um, and fifty some catches in in that year. So he can do that. They were a little bit struggling for a dual threat kind of running back over there in uh, Baltimore. Not to say that Kenneth Dixon, who's my boy isn't a dual threat guy guy caught 87 passes in college so he can catch him um, but he's nowhere near the level of Mark Ingram in the NFL proven sure uh, kind of running back so I think this is a, is a really solid landing spot for old Marky um, so currently that lineup is Kenneth Dixon um, Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram so a three-headed kind of attack with surely Mark Ingram getting most of the snap percentages And then we'll see kind of how the rest of that works out. The the Ravens have been through thick and thin with Kenny D. So interesting how that'll all kind of work out. But if you run the ball that much, you can't just have one guy being the guy over there. So they needed a they needed a at least a a strong surefire leader in the clubhouse, and they got that with Mark Ingram. Right. Um, He's a guy who in in 2017, he scored 268 total PPR points and averaged 17.9 points per game. So not too far removed from that, obviously on the Saints on a high flying dynamic offense. And then in in last year in 18, he uh, he averaged 12.4 a game. He did get a lot of touchdowns vultured from him last year, whether it was putting Kamara in on that goal line setting for whatever reason or um Taysom Hill or a, a bevy of other things kind of going different ways of he could have he had six he could have probably easily had 10 which would have boosted the points per game and all that kind of stuff so a nose for the red zone he's had 12 touchdowns in that 17 season he's had a bunch of six touchdown seasons he's had a nine touchdown season I think he had 50 touchdowns in his eight 
uh, year stay with um, New Orleans. So, well, so he did miss four games last year. He was yeah. suspended. And then, I mean, the Saints perennially we've talked about not really liking him. So I could see them like trying to keep his numbers down, especially knowing that his contract was up because they did try to re-sign him. Like they, right. he was trying to go back there, but there was more money mm-hmm. to be had in Baltimore, and so they let him go. But I could see them like maybe suppressing him a little bit, maybe not integrating him fully because of that suspension. They already were rolling with Kamara, and then you're right about Taysom Hill, just touchdowns right. all over the I place. I don't know how many t- rushing touchdowns he had, but uh, definitely... Uh, maybe not as many rushing, but he caught some short ones and was definitely involved in... Definitely some... Yeah, it was a part of a package down there that clearly took Mark Ingram out of the out of the fold for the most part in the, around the goal line where he had been making a living the last couple of years. 58 catches in 17. Yeah, with 71 targets, I think, mm. is, is what that was. Yep. Um, and, a, and a good old... Coming from a good old line to another good old line, Ravens perennially strong, strong old line over there. And there's really... It's not like they have a whole bunch of great receivers over there. Right now, the lineup is Willie Sneed, uh, Chris Moore, Jaleel Scott, which shout out to Jaleel Scott, should be somebody that... Uh, big, big target... Uh, of a of a guy that we liked last year who had a I forget what the exact injury was uh, uh, Jaleel last year but missed pretty much the whole year big target <laughs> over there could be a nice we used to talk about Cam Newton being a little inaccurate so they surrounded him with big guys Lamar Jackson a little bit inaccurate big fellow over there and they, they haven't done too much to secure they cut Crabtree so the, they got they still have uh Lasley and a, a couple other jokers over there but there's nothing nothing crazy going on wide receiver wise so I like Jaleel Scott as Tore a as his a hamstring little, that's yeah a, I, I wanted to say something with this hamstring there's they're surrounding um uh, Lamar Jackson with running backs and tight ends right I mean they're yes yeah. that's, that's it's Mark what, Andrews it's Hayden Hurst that's what and they brought and they Nick Boyle got a, a big t- deal a, who's one of the better blocking tight ends a really good deal for a tight end so um you know, especially one that sneaks under the radar fantasy wise. You know, you think you expect the tight ends that get paid to be the ones that catch all the passes. He's out there um, a lot on run blocking, but that's what they that's their game. That's what they're going. They're going in for it this year. And, and he has some upside receiving ability, Boyle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what is it? That was a piece that they needed to bring back if they're going to run this offense. People question the signing, but it's just, it's what they're doing. They're they're doing it a little differently. You're hoping Lamar can progress and be a little bit better of a, of an actual quarterback, but you know what even if you have a couple of pieces out on the line what Lamar Jackson does running around can can help put a band-aid on if there is a weak spot in that line there offensively um and it's just it's you know, everybody the, the running backs benefit from a running quarterback oh yeah no doubt I mean we see that each and every year anytime even if it's for a short stay if the quarterback backup quarterbacks in there running around or something it always helps um you've mentioned Kenneth Dixon had a 100 yard rushing game in the in week 17 um, obviously, they fell behind early uh, to the uh, Chargers in the playoffs, but had 50-something yards on three catches in the playoffs. Kenny Dixon is not somebody to look past here, but yeah, I think you I said I think he'll it, be a part of this offense. I, it's think, just, I think you said it right. They basically brought in the pros, pro running back for sure on the cheap. They didn't have to pay Ingram too much um, to, to go in and, and basically solidify. Enough. They're bringing back the Gus Bus. Gus Edwards is coming back. And they got Kenneth Dixon, and then they're like, "All right, well, let's just make sure that we gonna have the guys yeah. capable of do, doing what we know we're gonna do this year." Like you said, the, the tight end, the signing, and everything surround them um, with bringing in Mark Ingram. Just basically solidifies that running back room of guys that Gus is hard to tackle. He's no nonsense, north and south. Mark Ingram's not easy to tackle. Kenneth Dixon is if anytime he's healthy, he leads the league and broke miss force miss tackles per touch kind of thing. Mm-hmm. He's not hard, he's not easy to bring down. Um, but and and to, to throw it on, you talk about what they're gonna do. I don't think even if they had a choice, Lamar Jackson's ineptness of getting the ball to the wide receivers last year being on display as long as it was, they had a problem getting any any free agent wide receiver to even give them a look. Because they don't want to go over there and get their numbers crashed right. and further hurt, hurt whatever type of payday they'll have going on down the road. So, that, you know, hey, Hayden Hurst, Mark Andrews, Nick nobody Boyle, wants Lamar Jackson throwing them the ball. Not right now, they don't. <laughs> not, but those tight ends are like, hey, let's see what you got. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's a lot. There's a lot was made for the Chargers' defensive game plan in the playoffs. Haven't seen them within two weeks. And coming back at them and really made the Baltimore Ravens look bad on offense. They finished the game, they finished the year six and one. But to Jay's point, 
the they had one eighty three yard pass uh game from a receiver. That was Mark Andrews who got eighty three yards in one game and that was like he broke a fifty yard run. He mm-hmm. like the ball was in the right spot at the right time. Great pass from Lamar and Andrews was gone. And otherwise it was fifty fifty yards, fifty yards out of sneeze sneed. 50 yards out of Andrews, 47 yards out of Andrews, 60 yards out of Snead. Like, there's no – there's the passing yards aren't there for the offense. Mm-hmm. So, they're circling the wagons on what they're going to do to and get, I, you know, get sure, down the field this year. sure you're going to try to make that a little bit of a point of emphasis, but I don't think you're going to get too far away from being a little bit of, of your identity of, hey, this quarterback's going to run, and you're going to – they're going to be a running team. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously – the better you can get at passing the ball and and having some assets around him to do so, the harder you'll be to stop, especially after you've seen, it's like if, you know, after you've seen a starting pitcher once or twice through the rotation, by the third time you're ready to smack a home run off of his stuff there. And Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what happened when you saw the Chargers the second time. And a lot of the teams may be catching up. And to be um, fair to the Ravens, I don't think many teams could bring the personnel that the Chargers did, you know, having the yeah. – as far as defensive backs that are ready to come up and tackle and yeah. be that elite as far as athleticism. Well, I mean – They got Derwin James, the rookie, to come in there and pair up with a couple other guys that were already there that basically Pro Bowl and, yeah. um, you know, they just – they had some really good – They also played – the Ravens also played some of the worst – rushing defenses in the league through they that did. seven game stretch they um, did and and now that that now that ever the, the, the cat's out of the bag you almost need the the passing game to catch up just a little bit to be able to sustain that through a, a full season plus you lost some key pieces on defense uh mosley's big. ravens wise mm-hmm. um but they did, did they bring in earl thomas they did bring it the earl thomas and uh and ingram were their two big signings so ingram from a standpoint of fantasy wise like I think if you were obviously if you were anywhere near being ready to compete, I see a lot of people saying, oh, this is the best time ever to sell Mark Ingram. You got to sell Mark Ingram like you could. I'm down with selling Mark Ingram if if you know you're in a rebuilding mode. But if you have any inkling of competing like this, he's going to be a good piece for your team. Like you don't have to get rid of him in the offseason. Like he's going to be a viable sell option during the season. Once you realize that maybe your team isn't everyone has delusions of grandeur when you're in the offseason going through and you're through those first three or four games and then you can kind of be like well damn this was a grand illusion well i don't think uh, it would surprise anybody if there if mark ingram had two touchdowns week one and 100 yards rushing you right know? I, he's going to be a viable trade option throughout as long as he's healthy throughout most of this uh season with the ravens so like i don't think he's like you got to sell him right now because he landed like sure like i'm in some leagues where there's some bottom barrel guys and they their their roster is pretty sketchy and yeah, you should probably sell Mark Ingram, but, but not today. You don't have to today. Well, and you don't, and and you shouldn't be forcing the issue of selling Mark Ingram. Either. Exactly, I agree. Well, we've had this discussion before plenty of times. We talked about it a lot last year, last off season. What do you do with Mark Ingram? And I think it's just the, still the same exact argument. Like we were, we were telling you, we had the conversation about what to do with Mark Ingram. His last year as a Saint. What do you do with Mark Ingram? It was well. I mean, he's primed to have a good season and good numbers and be good for you on your team. So if you're competing, we were fine with you trading for Mark Ingram. But if you were a rebuilding team, we're fine with you trading him. And that still stands here. Like I don't think he lost any value going from the saints to the Ravens because I don't, the Ravens aren't as good as an offense, obviously, but I think he probably gets more work than they were going to give him in, in New Orleans. So I could see, I could definitely see his points per game going up from it from what it was last year, just yeah. because of Saints kept his volume down, like you were saying to begin with, right? And and he could have gone to a lot worse situation. And I don't like I said like a lot worse. The beginning of this thing to start it off, like I, I don't think they they didn't really have too many. They had some pass catchers, and then they had some Alex Collins and some Gus Edwards, and Kenneth Dixon was kind of the only guy who was in the middle, which he had been hurt and on and off again, and you don't really Suspended. necessarily know what you have with Kenneth Dixon. I'm not saying Mark Mark Ingram's some elite uh, pass catcher, but I mean he at least uh, you can't be like, oh well, there's no way he's gonna we're gonna put him out there and they're just running the ball. Like at least we can run around a little bit with Lamar and and run Ingram out of the backfield here. Like I think Kenneth Dixon can do that, but he's not a proven pro like sure Mark Ingram. Well, so I think that's a nice. I think Kenneth piece for them. I can't. I think Kenneth Dixon's a sharper pass catcher, but you can't say that that. Mark Ingram hasn't been in a top two at least running back attempts like pass attempts, you know, situation his entire career. Right. He's there's nobody has been as consistent 
and is consistently good at passing the ball to the running backs as the Saints mm -hmm. forever. Remember, and it's something that the, that, they, the, that the Ravens have to build into this offense if they're going to do it, and they didn't uh, do yes. much of it last uh, year. Yeah, exactly. Completely agree. I mean, remember Pierre Thomas? I mean, that, right. that feels like a decade ago. That right. was the Saints. That's the same coach and the same quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, that was forever ago. And so you got Mark Ingram, who's been catching passes in practice every day, for the last shown, five years, because that's what the quarter, that's what the team does. So maybe he's not a pure, pure that's what pass I'm saying. catching running he's back. Not, he's not up in the upper echelon, but, but I he's guarantee fine. you, he's, he's had good. as much practice doing yeah. it as any running back in the entire league outside of maybe Le'Veon yeah. Bell, because that's what the Saints do as a team and a running back unit. That's what they do. They're expected to catch balls, right? And he's done it. And like you said, two years ago, fifty something catches. Last year, suspended four games. Coaches kind of were like, well, you know, whatever, we're doing this thing kind of with and Still without Still had 21, you. though. Yeah, on minimum looks. It's just, just four games. Yeah, it's and, you know, I think, like you said, if the Ravens are really going to try to take it to the next level, let's give Lamar Jackson a year here to go. You at least have to, to be able to have the threat of passing, checking it down to a running back, I think, in this, in, in this offense, which they didn't do a, a, a ton with Lamar Jackson out there. I think that just... And I mean, why not put two two of these backs on the field at the same time too? If if this is what you're going to do, you could put a couple of run, couple of tight ends, a receiver, and get two backs and move around and be able to have some versatility with kind of the the offense that you're building there. I mean, you got Harbaugh who built a nice offense with uh, Kaepernick, and not obviously he's the other Harbaugh, but right. I mean, well, they have to me for Ingram. If I'm look, obviously somebody comes. To me, trying to get my Ingram and paying like a good retail price, I'm dead. Okay. But I am I agree with Jay. There's no force in the issue right now because if nothing else, at a minimum, they come out there in week three of the preseason and the defenses are vanilla and nobody really wants to do anything anyway, but you do have Lamar Jackson taking a snap and you do have Mark Ingram running downhill or what have you, Mark Ingram busts off a couple that's that's the way it works you know it's preseason remember what david johnson looked like last year in preseason in week three two straight like 12 yard runs just blew everybody up and then the next and then week one the cardinals offense was the worst in history because the defenses cared and mm -hmm. it wasn't david johnson's fault it's just that nobody on the offense around him could do anything so right. he was getting clobbered and they, nobody could even make the defenses back up well now you got you know, Lamar Jackson and, and Mark Ingram coming at you with a plethora of different skill sets at tight end and a good offensive line, like you said. And if nothing else, we talked about with the Jets, their efforts and what they're going after. And and RJ Bell and Fezzik have a, had a really good conversation about this, talking about some NFL football a couple weeks ago in their podcast. Maybe this is something that you could disagree with as the Ravens, their philosophy, trying to – everybody's passing it and they're coming at you with a run. And you could – given the rules – it's probably not the smartest idea, but they're just dealing with what they got right now for a year, and they're going to go all in, and they have it. They're bringing in uh, Ingram and signing that tight end that you didn't think was maybe worth that much money because he's maybe a really, really good run blocker. This is what they're – that's the pie that they're making. They're putting it all, and they're going to throw it in the stove, see what happens. Maybe it's a bad idea, but week to week, other defenses are trying to stop passes. And like yeah. I said, when – when and it, it it'll be different when you see them twice. But last year they did finish six and one, and the one was an overtime loss at Kansas City because very easily could have finished the season seven and zero oh, with Lamar Jackson in there throwing it for a maximum of, of sixty yards to one, you know, yeah. a sixty yard leading receiver on the team. So I think that at the very least, if you got Ingram at this point, you're holding him for his stock to, to rise and people say, oh, yeah, Lamar looks good in camp. Everybody, you know, it's going to look good in camp because he's going to have a shirt on that says you can't oh, hit I mean, me. And and then you got week three and Mark Ingram looks good. I would be holding unless somebody's a Ravens fan or is in big need at running back and they're connecting some dots and they're like, hey, Mark Ingram can help me take my running back situation to the next level and he can help me win. Unless I'm getting what I feel like is a really, really good price for Mark Ingram. But yeah, it's all relative. Last week, his value was down because you weren't sure where he was going to go. And if he ended up in another place, yeah, you I know, mean, he went from 65 to 92. Right. And ADP he, wise. Yeah. And obviously he's, he's got that older, older number by his name and his age. And that's not going to ever, but it's, a, it's, it's low mileage on it on that. Like he's never been a guy who's been out there getting a ridiculous workload at, in, in new, uh, not new England, in new, new Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. Like ever, like there was 
get like you alluded to earlier like there was times where people were like does new orleans just hate this guy why is he not getting oh we made jokes for years why is he not getting enough run and so he had 230 attempts last year or in seven right and that was a, a that's big the most that was a he's big, ever had that was a big year for him he's only broke 200 three times in his career so lo, low low mileage on on that guy and i think you could stack up some mileage this year i think he's going to be a good player redraft i'm all in sure um and dynasty wise like i i'll i'm I'll send out a if I'm in a competing situation, maybe somebody's willing to sell, sell and not sell for a premium value like they should be, and I'd I'd be I'd well, be like, trying to pluck off like some, a two? some Ingram. I I give up a two. Oh, that's not even. A, but like, is a one gonna? A one's probably too much. No, I mean not if I'm ready to win right now. Like, wh- if I'm ready to win right now, I'll I'll pay a one all day long. Like, so if you're a rebuilding team, should you trade him for a one? I wouldn't. I would probably try to squeeze a little. I would probably try to a either get a, another proven kind of more young guy or just try to get a little bit more than just like I don't think anybody's going to trade you like a high end one, but yeah. anything from like one six or lower, like I, I probably wouldn't even want to take for Mark Ingram because I think I could get a little more, but I would trade sure. something in, if I'm ready to go right now. And like you can't have too much running back depth, and he just fell into a volume situation yeah like so and he's good and he can catch and he can score like he's got a nose for the end you get in that red zone and mark ingram's got to be the first guy that you're thinking about giving the ball to if you're or lamar jackson sure if you're the ravens well if i if i'm a rebuilding team and i got a bad team offering me a first he's gone in my eyes if if you if you're a bad team and you're trying to give me your first round next enough. year i'm taking it if you're a really really good team next year and you're trying to give me next year and i don't even want this year's Right, right. If you're trying to give me next year's first round pick and you're a really good team and it, your playoffs work, like if you're a good team, you make the playoffs, you're in the back, not where, you know, the FFPC type format where you, if you accidentally miss the playoffs, you can win the 1 1 type mm-hmm. deal. In that case, I'm just, I'm kind of out on that. But I will take, I'll take a first round pick for Mark Ingram if I can get it. But it's, it is, it is one of those <laughs> things where this year, you know, it's, if you're going to take, if you haven't, you know, you got a rookie draft coming up and somebody's offering you 110 for your Mark Ingram and you're ready to win, it's it's hard to make that trade in my eyes because you don't know what you're getting at 110. In midseason, your team may not be doing what you want them to do and you could probably it's, trade. It's hard to make the trade on the, the, the end of the guy who's getting rid of Ingram. That's what I'm said. saying, yeah. yeah. Well, could, Because in, if, if nothing else, I mean, obviously anybody can get hurt and things happen and maybe Ingram doesn't do what you think he's going to do, but you, you see... Lamar Jackson out there, the defense has they they're going to try to stop the running back. And you saw how good Mar- Gus Edwards was last year, just because of the threat of yeah. Lamar Jackson moving well, I think side he ended to side, up averaging five yards a carry. That's what I'm saying. So if you're a team that can win, it's hard to give up a Mark Ingram for a 110 ish, let's say, because this year's 110 is hard. Well, depending on. You can get the, it mid season. Yeah. What I'm saying, no, for, that's like what that's what we started the conversation. It doesn't have to be. We're talking. I'm think I'm talking a little bit more about the guy who's ready to just get rid of Mark Ingram because he's a little old. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like if, even if if you have championship aspirations for your team, and then you start out one and three, and and it's you know for whatever reason because that's what fantasy football does, then there's no reason you can't go take Mark Ingram and get a first round late you know first round pick from a championship contender. I mean, I did that myself last year. Uh, my team didn't do what I wanted them to do, and even though Ingram wasn't having the best year, I still got a first-round pick from a contender because it was Ingram, and they had a chance to go do something with it. Right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm all in. If I'm ready to roll, I, I would sell for, or I'd buy for anything under the one six-ish. And but I don't even know if I you, would. You don't have. To, I don't think you have to pay that. Though. I don't. Yeah, but I don't even like. I would. I don't even know if I would let him go. If I like, I'm trying to get more than that. I I think. I want more than just a one. I don't know seven if you're going to get Ingram. much more f- for than that for a 29 year old running back. I agree Dynasty. with Jay. It's, just, it's it's a slippery slope. It happens so quickly. Like right now, in the moment, in this dynasty, you got you're going to be looking for that guy who's trying to win that championship that's going to pay the most. But he's still 29, and things happen so quickly. You know, yeah. it it's hard not that he shouldn't be worth for me that. i'm not that's, saying that that's it's what not i'm worth saying it. like I, I think he's worth more than that well yeah at the end of the day especially all, for the guy who's trying to come get him all that matters is what's happening in your starting lineup and right. mark ingram's going to be in everybody's whoever he's going to be in a starting lineup every week if he's healthy mm-hmm. that's what matters and your 110 or your 17 in your rookie draft might be on your bench for three years that's yeah. how rookies work but 
the asset value of what one seven could represent to somebody would be hard to pass up given getting rid of the yeah. 29 year old well, running where back. he is right now at 90 some adp like yeah i mean one seven would be a, a nice trade for for that as far as yes yeah, basically a 10th round pick. value wise but i think I mean, it'll I go back up, I, I think I mean, it, it probably if you look at the players that are around him there's there's plenty of guys there's you're going to be like at some point in the draft people who need running backs are going to start gobbling up mark ingram because like, you just drafted the squad and everyone thinks they can win so that there's no way the adp doesn't come back up and be like oh i'm in the sixth round and i still need another i need my rb2 like Fuck yeah, I want Mark Ingram right now to be my second running back, even though he's 29. Yeah, I saw right. that. Saw that myself last year in a startup. Absolutely. But I mean, there's there's so many like players. Like he's on just this a guy you can count on. So like there's I I can't imagine this ADP doesn't climb back up into this into that 65 area because you, you can you can count on him. Like mm -hmm. that's mid sixth round. I can see that. And I I saw him go mid sixth round last year facing a suspension. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I just it's going to creep up. I mean, there's plenty of players on this list that there's no chance I'm taking them over Mark Ingram, Mike. Yeah. No I'm chance just... I'm taking Daryl Henderson over Mark Ingram. I mean, uh, maybe. Doubt the, it. Depending on how, how I just, in a startup. My, my startup on, went terrible. If depending I'm... on how I built my startup, uh, maybe. Maybe I'll take a shot on a, a really young guy, but. Yeah, I mean, if you when you get chances that, are I drafted a decent amount of running backs all the way down, and maybe I don't necessarily need Mark Ingram at this point. Yeah. Kenyon Drake's at eighty nine. Kenyon Drake or Mark Ingram? I mean, if I'm ready to go right now and I, I I feel good about the construction that I just put together, I'll take Ingram. Yeah, if you got a couple of wide receivers, just the way the thing fell out, and you got a if you got a let's say you got a Mahomes and a tight end or something, and you need running back, you're going Mark Ingram. But if you got if we if I got the running backs that I want, I might be looking elsewhere than Mike Mark Ingram in my startup. Because Daryl Henderson's a way more fun pick if if I sure. already if I have four or five really good running backs through the first six rounds, which is that's usually how I'm trying to go. <laughs> right, but he's not going to be at this range of ADP anyway. Sure. All right. Well, that'll wrap up Mark Ingram.